The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raha, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fury Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, Cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, Do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you, all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We got through some uh, last week. Uh, I'll show you if you grab your uh, envelope. If anybody, uh, if anybody has a trap uh, to raise your hand to raise your hand last week, uh, please do so now. One person, raise your hand. If anybody can draw it, I don't know if you can do that.
I don't know. There we go. Oh, I got one hour. I guess I got one hour of battery life. Let's see how much I can get done in one hour. <clears throat> okay, so of course you know, all over Philadelphia, priests are wearing green uh, for the Eagles fly. Eagles fly. We're very excited about this. Uh, and so I, you know, there's always I, you can't not preach about this somehow. But let's talk about. I'll tell you about something. Um, I'll tell you some a couple of stories here and then. But I just want to kind of do a, a, a thought. Uh, exercise. So imagine uh, you're a Tennessean, all right? You call yourself a Tennessean. Uh, and let's say you, uh, and you and you're a Tennessee volunteer, right? You actually play for one of the sport teams, sports teams on the Tennessee volunteers. But uh, when you go to practice, you wear a Kentucky jersey and workout stuff, and you got a Kentucky helmet, you got a car, it's got a license plate that says Go Big Blue, Right? Not a UT sticker on it at all. Nothing that has any, not even three stars. You've even got a Kentucky license plate. Right? And then when, you, when, you're, uh, when you're practicing, you know, you're running plays uh, that aren't from the UT playbook, but you're running plays from, the, you know, from, your, from your Kentucky uh, days. And then whenever you watch, so after you've gotten kicked off the team, because obviously you're a, a, a maniac, you still say, no, I'm a Kentucky, I'm, I'm a Tennessee volunteer, but you cheer for Kentucky, you got seats right up front, you got, you got, you got season tickets to all uh, the UT football games, but you wear football games and, and volleyball games and softball games and baseball games, you're a, you're, you're a fanatic, but you're always wearing Kentucky blue and cheering on for the, uh, for the Kentucky Wildcats. Number one, if you live long enough to do that, right? But you still call yourself a Tennessee volunteer, when everything that you're doing says, no, you're not even close. You might even say, you know what, I don't even agree with a lot of the things that the volunteers are doing. I don't really, really agree with what Coach Heifel does, but, you know, I go to the games because I'm supposed to. I've just always done it. But I'm a Tennessee volunteer, huge fan. I will be all my life, right? You never hear that come out of my mouth except in a story. So it, this is what's called cognitive dissonance. Right? It doesn't make any sense. I might have told the story. I hope I'm not telling it twice to you guys, but I've definitely told it once before. I had a guy that came in, a fellow that came in a couple of years ago. He says, Father, I want to talk to you about religion. I'm like, okay, I'm your man. So he comes in, he sits down, he's like, I got some things I want to talk to you about. I'm like, oh, sir, let's begin in this diatribe. I cannot wait any longer to hear what your views are. He's like, I don't really believe all that stuff in the Bible. I'm like, okay, all right. Tell me, tell me what you don't believe. Well, that whole thing, that whole Jesus thing. I mean, what do you, I, was, I just don't know. I'm like, well, what don't you know? What don't you believe in? Those things that he called miracles, I don't really think they were miracles. I think maybe somebody might have had epilepsy and they got better, and then or somebody might have been just might have had a, 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 brand, a, a mental problem and then they got better. I don't think he, I don't think he committed any, any did any miracles. I'm like, okay. Scratching the surface here, and he's like, and I'm like, you know, that whole thing that happened over Easter, you know, like we, where they said he was, where, where, where he died, and he rose again from the dead. I, I don't, I don't believe that, and, and, and that he was resurrected. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. And he's like, is, am, I, am I, am I a good, am I still a good Catholic? I said, brother, you're not even Christian. So, and he got all offended. I'm like, do you remember that thing that we stand up and say every single Sunday? He's like, yeah, Ellie, like, you say that and you don't mean it? We're like, well, that's just what we do, right? That's what we do. That's not what we're supposed to do, right? We are, we are, if we call ourselves Christians, we don't say we're fans of Christ. Hey, what a guy, huh? What a guy. Like him a lot, like him a lot, bigly, like him bigly, and a big fan of, of, of the Jesus. Even like his people, they're they're pretty cool too. They're pretty cool too. But I, you know, he's not going. But I'm not. I'm not going to call myself. That's not a Christian. That's not a follower of Christian of of, uh, of Christianity. I forgot the word. It's not a follower of Christianity. Just because you like. I mean, I like some pet tenets of Buddhism. I like, I like to sit there and just chill, right? But that doesn't make me a Buddhist, right? But when we call ourselves Christians, we call ourselves Catholics, especially. 
when we come to church on Sundays and we call our, and when we check something that says, you know, what, what religion, we check Catholic, uh, we send our kids to Catholic schools, we bring them to Sunday school, we're doing all those things. We're going to the practices, we're reading the playbook, but if we step out into the world, can anybody tell? Would anybody be able to tell? Just like that, just like, just like that song says, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Some of you have retained, have uh, have lost your your Christianity, your Jesus uh, um, uh, sign before you even get out of the car, before you even get out of the parking lot. I've seen it. Some of you have, have lost your Jesus sign uh, when you don't know that Father is watching uh, in a parking lot at Target. I've seen it. Not you, not you guys, but in the war, in the bigger, bigger. I don't, I don't cruise Target parking lots anymore. I get used to it. Uh, but I've, I've seen it when you don't. Th- or I tell you what, a, a funny one is um, if when I answer the phone in the office and people start wailing. Talking to talking to me like they because they don't know who I am, and then they start just just going on whinging about something, and I said, okay, well, hey, it's Father Doug. They're like, oh, Father, I'm sorry. Do you treat people the way that you treat me? I mean, you guys laugh at my jokes. That's nice, but I know they're not that funny, right? But you generally act different in front of your priest than you act in front of the people you work with. You generally act you you generally act different in front of your parents than you do in front of your friends. You generally act d- different in front of your teachers, and I'm not going to say that, because who knows what that's all about. Do you walk the walk, and do we talk the talk? If we come in here and punch our clock for an hour, or in my case, 48 minutes on Sunday, does that make us a Christian? It's just a place where we come in and fuel up, my friends. If you're not, t- if you're not taking what we're given if you're not taking what Jesus is giving of himself and going back out there and letting people know that you are Christians, not by Jesus hanging from, uh, uh, Jesus hanging from your rosary on your, uh, on your car or a bumper sticker on the back of your car or a Mary uh, uh, a statue in front of your house or, or a big Catholic papal flag uh, in front of your house. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because if we're not doing, if we're not following the laws and the teachings of the church, we might not be Christians. So let's do an inventory this week. Let's look at the things. If you, if, you know, you can go back and look at this. But we know, we know in the back of our heads the things that we do that might make us not be a perfectly well-rounded Catholic. And then come back next week, being ready to start making ourselves a little more perfectly well-rounded. This place is for people who fail. This is not a place for perfect Christians. They don't exist, my friends. They exist when they get to heaven. And the people that are here in these pews, these weekends, are the ones who are trying. Right? That's why you're here. Because you want to get better. God loves you just as you are. But He wants you to be better. So, Think about that this week. Take a look at the playbook. Evaluate our actions. Come back next week. We decide during the week whose side we're really on. And then come back next week fired up to really go forth and move together as a team to sainthood. Go Eagles.